Hola chicas y compañeros, and thank you for watching my little video. My name is Dr. Stone Meredith, Dr. M, for my students at CSU Global and the students at CSU Global. Thank you so much for all your hard work and your dedication to this idea of our uh, English cert certification program. Again, the mission behind this program is so that folks working in high school um, can become certified in teaching dual enrollment. Um, it's a really, I think, compelling facet of the best of what American education can be and that we can take young students and give them access to college credit before they enter college. Uh, you know, so many facets to why this is an important project. Um, one of the major facets is the, the, the amount of money that it saves. I, I don't think it's ever um, wrong to remember that, that life is expensive and certainly education is. And so I think to give our young people the opportunity while they're in high school to earn college credit in advance, what a great sense of agency and, and earning that, that gives young people to say, hey, while I'm in high school, I'm really building my future. And it also instills that idea that, that these young writers and thinkers really are important, really do have a place and a seat in the college classroom. Um, and so again, you see more of why I think this program and these courses are the best of what American education can be. Uh, world literature, the course that we teach at Colorado State University Global was written by, in my opinion, one of the best scholars ever in the field. Her name is Dr. Jean Fuchs, F-U-C-H-E-S. And if you want to learn more about her, simply Google her. Uh, my favorite text by her is called The Road to Epidurus, where she tells the, her stories and her trip to Greece uh, with a beloved colleague of hers who was a, noted in the world of theater and how she struggles with the Greek that she learned. She is very good at that language and what that experience was like going to Epidurus and to stage this play. And I think it's a really interesting text and it's a very good read um, because it shows um, how the scholarly community still works and travels on a dime because I'm sure if you're a teacher, <laughs> you realize that we're perhaps not as compensated as well as some other fields, but it shows how passion drives um, scholars from around the world to come together and create art, um, and in our case, literature. So again, the course was created by Dr. Jean Fuchs. Um, you may also see her name credited on working with Balanchine, the, the great dancer with Balanchine's cookbook. She's also created with that. She has many other credits to her name. So uh, her work in at Hofstra University and her many years of teaching in Venice, other places overseas, but her work in Venice in particular, uh, I think is really palatable in this course. And, and I wanna tell you a little bit about what some of the overarching missions for this course in world literature are, um, because we're in a very exciting time. And when I finished high school in the 80s, 1986, class of 86, shout out to anyone out there, um, we were just really beginning to see the canon expand. And I remember reading about Cabeza de Vaca and some of these other explorers who had come to the New World and had written things down, and we were beginning to read them. Um, we were beginning to read about maybe some of the early captivity narratives where women wrote things down. and Bradstreet and uh, the carping tongue that she perceives herself to be, and yet she's an early American poet. So we were just really beginning to see the canon expand. And then over time, we have seen more and more native voices come out and, and be a part of the new world and these early, early days of exploration in the new world. And, and, I, and the growth really in my lifetime is so inspiring and so encouraging that it's really nice to hear young people in high school expect and anticipate and welcome texts from multiple cultures. And I think be really as eager and engaged um, to read about different lands and different places as we were when we first heard about Cabeza de Vaca in some of my early graduate experiences at the University of North Carolina. So 
With that said, it is important to remember where we came from to see where we're going, right? And I think Dr. Fuchs has done a super job of connecting our modules with key moments in world literature. And so let's talk about what some of those key moments are and some of who some of those key writers are. For example, she looks at Tolstoy and we look at some of those themes of class and what class means in a place in a, in a culture that historically uh, class has been legislated either by a czar or by the government, right? You know, pre and, and post-revolution, it was either by the czars once the, that massive nation man to un, managed to unify in some way or by a government. That with the idea, you know, founded in a communist ideal of uh, egalitarian rule and egalitarian ways. But again, the, the idea of class really comes through in that as well and who holds what role. And so, of course, Tolstoy predates the revolution and predates all of those ideas. And if you do a little Googling, you'll find that uh, the, the interesting uh, kind of rolling tide of Tolstoy's reputation and perspective that the Russian peoples have on him um, and kind of the renaissance that he is enjoying today uh, for a variety of reasons, right? And so we look in, in the idea of world literature that Tolstoy is this early voice of looking at class and a writer who really values those um, who are humble, those who are driven to serve for service's sake and not for reward, and how controversial those ideas must have been to so many who were in the literate class. And so Tolstoy is important in those ways. Another key moment where we pause in this class is this idea of Baudelaire. And so, you know, it's so easy now as we work with students to go online and whether you speak French or not, you can go to YouTube and hear Baudelaire's words read in the French with the words either in English or French shown on the screen and just hear the amazing power of his repetition and say, wow, he's so much like everybody else of his time, and yet he's not, right? What does Baudelaire do in the tradition of his time and how does he play with meaning and play with theme to kind of get different messages and think of, you know, get us to think of things in different ways, much the way Shakespeare does when he breaks that Petrarchan tradition so many centuries before, you know, this idea of Petrarch, every woman had to be gorgeous and lovely. And then Shakespeare says, well, my mistress eyes are nothing like the sun. And I like the fact that she has bad breath, right? That's a huge break in poetry. And so in, in this course at CSU Global, the World Literature course, we look at how Baudelaire, I would argue, does many of those same ideas because instead of saying everything is coming up rainbows, he looks in the things that life that aren't and expects us to find some kind of succor and comfort there. Um, and, and he uses so many devices that we see emerge and continue forward in all the expanding voices of our canon today that I would argue that he is a direct connection, um, particularly to some of the leading music figures today that our young students might connect with. So he's another key moment in the course that I would encourage you to think about. Um, all of it really kind of builds to these um, ideas where I think we see really crescendo together, the idea that the old traditions and the old world really has this fruition in the new. When we get to um, our late and most beloved Gabriel Garcia Marquez and uh, the, 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 the hundred years of solitude and all the potential of, of the classic literary tropes, what does place mean? What do symbols mean? How is word usage? Um, all those things come together. And, and it's such a lovely text as teachers to teach, you know, classic literary symbol, symbolism, theme, all those kinds of ideas that may be on your syllabus to teach. But I think more importantly, too, that the nuances that can come out and this, this humanity of solitude for anyone who has ever felt alone for anyone who has felt true solitude and maybe solace in solitude. I think that last year of pandemic makes so many of those messages 
of Marquez, perhaps even more important from the location where that happens to a remote place often forgotten that only pirates would pause to the power of the rose and, and what it's intended to be and then how it's ultimately used to bring succor and torture all at once. All of these ideas that once again can connect to traditions that continue forward in our songs and our films and our television and I think maybe even significantly, significantly in our memes. As teachers of world literature, imagine what would happen if you took all of these traditionally canonized texts, most of which were written, were written by men, many of whom were written by white males. If you look at their traditions and the forms they established, and then look at these growing expanse of voices that are now building on those traditions, what would happen if you took a writer like Tolstoy and created a meme? Could that meme not resonate the same way that one for Baby Yoda or a big rapper of the day does as well? I would argue yes, and I would argue that our class in world literature opens the door for you to find those meme moments, those traditions in Eastern in Tolstoy's case, but Western in most of what we read, pull those ideas forward, and really begin to use the tools of history, of science, of art, and all that you can imagine from those moments in world literature to tie them together and explain to your students the traditions and the reasons that those writers were writing from within, and then see maybe if we can't find, find uh, core values, core memes to help bring them back from their current day into the world of our great world literature of the past. Thank you so much for your time. Again, remember, Clever Chicas y Compañeros, we're always out there at cleverchicas.com sharing these videos from all the courses at CSU Global and a variety of other educational resources from the Finding Florida Project and other nice folks out there in the world. Make it a great day and be well.